This is a test. This is a test.
Welcome. We're going to go ahead and get started with our work session today. Turn it over to Dr. Neil. Thanks for Thank you all for being here. The first item on our agenda is resolution 2022-301. And it has to do with how we expand the city trust. And it's a multiple step process. But there is a big trust fund uh, that is almost seven million dollars. And to spend that money, it has to have board approval first in the form of a resolution. And the next step is that it goes to city council. So I'm glad we're trying to see how it's here is. And originally we had asked for five million of the seven million to build this building. So we had a resolution to pull five million out of the seven million dollar fund to build this new central office. And as it turns out, that money is still sitting in one of our accounts untouched because we got PSCA money for this building. And that was uh, like Christmas in July that year. So we still hold the five million untouched because we can't touch it without city council approval. But the resolution uh, before you is to pull out up to seven million and the total was about 6.9 million. Uh, to go forward with a portion of the athletics master plan. And we have that in several phases, but the first phase is ready to go with board approval and council approval for funding. And then Mr. Walker, I mentioned it last night, that Mr. Walker, I think that he's here tonight to explain it. And I'll, I'll call him up to the mic, but it's essentially the beginning of the athletics master plan and the first projects for um, multi sports. Yes, thank you, Dr. Neal. Um, yes, that was explained very well. So, um, you know, you will recall this summer we kind of went in depth with the athletics master plan that touched on um, everything that we would like to do eventually. So, uh, this would be phase one and uh, certainly would be a good start from a financial standpoint. This would roughly be about a third of the overall. Uh, you know, full plan that we talked about this summer. Uh, with this phase, um, the areas that we would be working with would be uh, turfing our competition fields with soccer, softball, and baseball. Um, also, a half turf field uh, to the field of the Michael Field House that would be covered as a multi sport covered facility. And then the field behind the middle school um, as an alternate uh, with this project as well. You know, when we're talking about uh, these areas and pulling these specific things from the master plan, uh, part of our thinking was what can we do? What uh, projects can we pull that would affect uh, the most people in a positive way? Um, so I think when you look at these five different things with soccer, with baseball, with softball, obviously those sports. Uh, what we're doing to the right of the field house would have impact a lot of sports and a lot of people. And then uh, the field behind the middle school the field house, like we've discussed, it really is probably the most used field in the trust uh, with P classes, football, uh, park and rec activities at night. So uh, we feel like pulling these specific items uh, from the master plan would be a good start for us and uh, we can have some of the people in the process. I did say to Jennifer Abney about the PE units. And if, if we can get the field behind the middle school, that would be on the practice field that would be twerking. But we would also consider that alternate lines for football, soccer, and lacrosse. Um, colored turf lines, no paint at all, just so many of the correct colors for those three sports to keep You are here. You want to make a comment on that? Um, yeah, and that film is definitely used a good bit. And, <laughs> you know, we use it for all of our PE classes during the day, and I think having the lines there would be beneficial, you know, for us academically, but then for all of the multi use throughout the community and you know, with our uh, uh, practice students. Any questions? This is on the consent agenda. So timeline wise, they press the funds and then we open it with this. This would go to the city council uh, meeting 
We'll get it to you tonight. We'll get it on your agenda. So we have, we did not have workshop tomorrow night. We did a workshop to Monday night. So if we could get it to my mayor and Dan, I'm going to see the clerk. We should be able to get it on the agenda and let me know what's going on. All we need is approval from the board and then the resolution has all the signatures. Not on the board, so are you staying at home meeting or do you have to slip out and read that? We might get to you tonight. Yes, so the time going is as soon as possible. Well, how long the process is it just like? I mean, when you go from dirt to turf, I mean, do you know what how long it takes? It's a good question. Um, you know, we're when we're talking about you know three of these areas being spring sports, I think we would be extremely tight for this year. Um, probably your worst case is where there would be delays with weather or construction or whatever, and we start practicing games and not have it ready to go. Um, so just you know, from us communicating, it would be we would work on this after approval as quickly as possible, and then. Um, you know, hopefully get to a point where we can make those decisions with, okay, we're too close to the season, we've got enough room before the season, or we need to wait to start the day after the season's over. Um, so I think we just have to see how long the process takes and make the best decision on, um, you know, starting to get it done before the season or starting the day after. Uh, any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next up is a, a fundraiser uh, for the band, but it's not the whole band. Uh, 65 students have the opportunity to go to Indianapolis. And Mr. Gunman is here to talk about this great opportunity for his new work plan. And it's taught music for all. It's, it's a bit of a pinnacle in his career. So I wanted him to be here to explain it and to talk to us about it. Of his fundraiser which is below 65 students. Um, thank you all for having me um, here to talk a little bit about the, the band and what's going on. So um, about this time last year, we were brief, uh, really fortunate to receive the news that we were accepted to perform at the Southeastern Regional Concert Band Festival through Bands of America through Music for All. And, and uh, it's, a, it's a really big uh, opportunity for our band to kind of put us on the national stage. Uh, and it's uh, they select students from all over the southeast, and I think about a little over 250-ish uh, high schools applied for nine positions, and we got one of those. Well, we had a great performance in Atlanta. Uh, students got to work with some of the top college directors and whatnot, and then after that performance, the our name, Trustful's name, got around, and I was encouraged to apply to the national concert band um, And so that's kind of the same premise. I think it was uh, maybe over 650 high schools applied for six high school positions. Um, there are different tiers, but we were selected for the very, very, very top tier. So this is, um, we're super proud of this. It was just incredible. I mean, that's something even when I was in high school that we just, and in college, that we just dreamed about, you know, being selected for the National Concert Band Festival. Well, here, here we are. Um, and it's been really just uh, evolved very, very quickly. So we have several fundraisers that are happening. You know, we're you know, doing some, uh, snap fundraising in the fall in the early spring semester in January, uh, because it is for a select group of students, even though it's representing our whole uh, band program, um, it is, it's, it's a top concert group. Um, so it's about approximately 55 students that are going to be traveling to Indianapolis. Um, a little bit about the event itself. Um, this is, uh, it's, there's going to be about 3,000 students in Indianapolis participating in various events, and we are at the very top of, of it. They picked, uh, for the selected group, they took nine high school groups and nine middle school groups. And so what that means for us is that we'll be performing some very high level uh, music and uh, getting ready for that. We'll travel up there and we'll spend several days in Indianapolis at Music for All. Uh, gonna, our students are gonna have the opportunity to work several times throughout the, I, I recently found this out since our last conversation, Several times between now and March, uh, they're going to get to work with several college band directors that are either going to come in via Zoom or they're going to come into our campus to work with us. 
uh, several of the composers of the pieces that we're performing are going to be coming in. So we'll have uh, two interactions with them, and then all this as well at Music for All. So our students are going to get the opportunity of a lifetime. I'm going to get the opportunity of a lifetime. Uh, the folks that crafted the music that we're performing, that we only talk about in class, that we research, that we do all these things, we're going to get to meet. Um, students are going to get to work with some high level uh, college professors, uh, not only uh, band directors, but also within their area. So they're going to have time. The trombone students are going to get to spend time with the you know, trombone player from the Cleveland Orchestra or whatever different places. So it is a, it's a huge undertaking. Um, it's uh, it's a lot of work for our students, but I mean they're they're ready, they're excited. I'm excited. Um, it's um, it, I've, since our last conversation, maybe about two or three weeks ago, I've talked to college band directors from literally all the way as far as Oregon that are calling and saying, "But where is the book? What is this about? Can we come in and we see your students? Can we recruit your students? Uh, is this a performing arts school? You know, they, they, they don't know, but now uh, our name is." You know, it was it's pretty cemented. It's our second, you know, national event that we're doing. So we're very, very proud of the work that they're doing, and we're just excited, a little nervous, but excited. So. Thank you. Thank you all for, for having and getting to hear about the, the program. So. Do you want to suggest a fundraising? Or so, about that? Or yeah. yeah. So we're a part of what we're doing is we're. Uh, Raising side, uh, doing some fundraisers specific to the students that are going up. And, and uh, SNAP fundraising is going to be our very biggest push um, initially uh, to get uh, to get some, some funds in there. We're going to be reaching out to members of the community, um, some prominent members of the community to help us with that. It's just a huge, huge undertaking. I think it's uh, over $70,000, $75,000 roughly to take the group down there. Transportation, the cost, and everything is included. Uh, you know, the, the the hotels, uh, all the transportation, all the things, but it's a pretty big price tag, but it is definitely something that's well worth it. And just from a prestige standpoint, just to even apply to this, after now that we've been accepted, we won't be able to apply for another five years. Uh, it's very, very, very selective. I mean, it's it's, it's incredible. I, I would say that this is, I told Dr. Neal jokingly that I'm probably gonna retire after this. <laughs> and, and, and I can't because my wife told that. But uh, but it, this is uh, probably the, the pinnacle of, of my career as a director to be in that position. And I can imagine for our students that are going to be playing, not they always play at a very high level, but they're playing at a high level for, you know, the most prestigious folks in, the, in, in in our field. So like I said, the SNAP fundraise, we'll be reaching out to folks in the community. And as we go along, we'll uh, do other fundraisers as possible, as much as possible to meet to cover the cost. Right. Yeah, retire. We'll take a in five years. Yeah, that would be the plan. Yeah, well, now we have that as a resume. <laughs> so yes, I, I, I hope that that's a, that would happen again. Yeah, so good. Like, the final song. Yeah, that was the first time we did it. Anyway. Yeah, well, we've been, been videoing and rehearsing, and luckily the weather has held out. We can put it together. We and so we finally got to clean it and got to do it for everyone. They're, they're they're really happy about that too, and, and just the whole the whole practice has been just such a an amazing year with the new uniforms and the new instruments that we got, and uh, just it's the whole package. It's, it's just great. It's turning out to be just a great year. Um, just excited all around. Well, thank you all. Yeah, that's too bad because I don't want to argue with for approval and Roman numeral three is not. We did this last year. Uh, we are asking uh, freshmen or juniors to stay home on October 11th and have a remote learning day. This does not change our calendar. We don't need approval for it. It's just like we're here to talk about what happens on that day for uh, sophomores and seniors and why we're doing the October 11th remote learning day for freshmen and juniors. And I would love for you to help us get the word out on this um, capture change for those two groups. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Well, uh, pre ACT required state testing is October 11th, and our 10th grade, of course, is our largest class. We have 446 10th graders. We'll also be testing any need for eating ninth graders who are maybe a credit or just half a credit or whatnot. Behind, because we'll have to keep them in their cohort. 
So that's a lot of testing environments, uh, accommodating the uh, five doors for testing, the accommodations for uh, smaller group testing, extended time testing. We're talking about a requirement of a lot of teachers to do this uh, correctly. Um, so there's there really there is an opportunity to have school for everyone and do all the testing that it's supposed to be done. So last year we did offer a, a remote day. Uh, so October 11th, the proposal would be that 9th and 11th would be remote. 10th graders would come to school for their state required testing, and then 12th graders would have a college visit day, which would be helpful for them because that's after a long weekend. Uh, the tenth is a holiday, so if they really wanted to go out of town to see another university that's not in LA, it would be a good time to do that. So that's the uh, eleventh for looking at October eleventh. There's also an opportunity to complete applications with mm -hmm. knowledge and to do their job searches for career. So uh, the feedback I got from last year was the excellent seniors. Do they just need that to you know, finish their application or to get ready to go to whatever college is ready? So if they've been accepted as well, sometimes they go deeper and they can come up with the actual college of whatever they're going to do, college of nursing, engineering, and so on. So it does give them an opportunity to connect with some with their next step in education. So so it is a school that mm -hmm. the best calendar on our calendar is a school that it's just different. For the class, it does not affect the paper rate. Mm -hmm. Any questions? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, well, they have scores on the end. You've seen the uh, second, and you've seen the third grade scores. We did have second grade scores, but they were the rest of the scores were embargoed until recently. So we had a chance to analyze the layout. I'm happy for you staying here and uh, about to talk about these scores. And you know, I really I just want to preface it by saying how proud we all are of our teachers and our administrators. Um, because being able to come out of COVID the way that we have, so to speak, in terms of just what our scores look like, we just have a lot to be proud of. And I know at the school level. The administrators have already shared uh, test data with teachers, and teachers are already kind of digging into it and looking at it and um, celebrating, you know, the growth, and then looking at areas in which they want to continue to grow in. And so we're very proud of everyone. So we're going to look at it basically three different three different ways. Um, the first thing we're going to look at in just a second is sort of how we compare with over the mountain schools um, in terms of our ELA scores, our math, and our science, and then we'll look at state from a statewide perspective. And then we'll drill it down a little bit to our individual schools. Um, we can kind of leave that comparison between the state and our school. So, do I need to just kind of advance to the next one? Okay, so this is just a quick overview of this would be grades three through eight. Um, I will have some slides on grade two, but grade two is not a part of the accountability. That's why you don't see that here. So, this is a comprehensive. Uh, view of grades three through eight, looking at Mountain Brook, Vestavia, of course, that's right here in the middle, Thumbwood, and Hoover. And this would be for English language arts, which doesn't include reading, math, and science. So um, we do some just come with those percentages. And you can see out of the five that we have listed here um, in ELA, we are at the third point. And then I'll say four and four. And all of these schools listed here are in the top 10, which you're going to see that in just a second. So we are in the top 10 for the second year in a row with our eight top scores. All right, so here's just a, a break out of the top 10 schools. Um, and I like to kind of throw out this number because I think it's really important. There are roughly 138 districts in the state of Alabama. 138. So that puts us in the 92nd percentile, mm -hmm. um, which is pretty impressive. So you can see the breakdown here. This would be for ELA. Not for Vestavia, we're coming in at third. 
Come with us in Sarah Lynn to Coleman Cooper, Auburn, and Jackson. In the state of the state of Bob, yes. Okay, we'll advance, please. All right, we'll look at the same type slide, except for this time, this will be math. So we are going to that around six in the entire state. Let's get right down. A lot of similar schools in that mix. Space at the bottom here. All right, and then we'll go one more one with science. And just a reminder about science, this would be grade um, four, six, and eight when I'm set to science. Okay. So we are going to be in number four in the state in science. Comments or thoughts surrounding that? Yeah, it's really great. It's really so great. the top 10 kind of tricked a little bit, and all the top 10s are not still in the top 10. Correct. Yeah. 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 And we are with the ones that we have listed, our own amounts of those are. Uh, but yes, there are some kind of newcomers in certain content areas. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's take a look at um, just a comparison. Last year was our first year for ACAP. Okay. So comparison between last year and this year. And before we get there, I guess really kind of big takeaways, um, at least for me, was the fact that we are showing improvement in nearly every category. Um, if not, we're kind of right where we were last year. And then, you know, in a couple of areas, we have growth, but probably not as much as where we want to get to. But the, I think the most important point is we are growing um, and improving. And I think that's what you, you strive for. So we'll take a look at these comparisons. So uh, I did include grade two again. I just think that's important for us to kind of see where those kids are, even though they're not a part of the accountability. Um, last year was their first year in test. So we've got 2021 or 2020, 2021, and then this recent administration. So you can see what I'm talking about as far as um, the growth. And when we look at these percentages, we're looking at percent proficient. Okay, meaning we'll look back just a minute. Um, Students at grade at grade level or above. Okay, this is for English language arts. All right, so we'll look at math. We're going to get growth. Really, really proud of that sixth grade group. That's a lot of growth in the year. And then, like I mentioned earlier, trending in the right directions with our seventh and eighth grade. We'll continue to work um, in those areas that how how we fact that we're demonstrating growth there. Okay, and then join me in the science, please. Four, six, and eight. We're looking forward to 2022, 2023. All right, we'll take a look now um, at our specific schools uh, compared to the state, and then uh, we'll break down all the slides that look similar from this point on as far as how they're laid out. But we'll go through the first one. You can just kind of get your bearings, but we'll start with grade two and CLA. And so, what you're looking at here on the far right would be the state. Okay, followed by Trestle City. And then over on the far right would be a breakout of each of our schools with Cahaba, Magnolia, and Payne. What you want to pay attention to on this would be the color scheme. And so level one is kind of this mustard yellow color. Level two, level three, level four. What we really want to look at obviously would be the purple and the blue because that's grade level or above grade level. Um, level two. Means I've met some of the standards, but I still have some work to do. And level one means, you know, we've got, we've got a good amount of work to do. Um, but you'll see that that's a color that is not very prominent <laughs> for us. So we're very pleased about that. Um, and then I just have a, just a kind of a big, bigger breakout of tops so that you can sort of see um, as compared to the state. So it would be second grade, DLA. 
And again, percent proficient, which by state definition means the skill set to speak. Right, let's move on to grade three. So we'll look at the LA. Very high for scores. 86% of our kids were grade level or above. Okay, we go to the next, please. Okay. We can look at grade four. We'll look at ELA, math, and science. And this one, the science is grade four. This test goes to science. So, again, we're doing our comprehensive flow, two percent level one, so we have eighty four percent of our students. And so one of the things that one when teachers sort of start to break down the, the data and they're looking at specific skills, I mean, one of the things that we really encourage our teachers to do, and they do a great job, is we really focus on our level twos because we like to see how close they are to level three. And so we can really drill down and provide some specific interventions with those kids because that the ultimate goal is to, to move upward, right? And to move those kids up. And so um, our teachers do a good job of that. All right, let's see the grade four sign. That was our next. All right, and we'll take a look at science. Really proud of our, our science scores. Um, we had a curriculum instruction meeting last week and some of the chatter that you hear in the state, and I just thought this is really important to kind of speak about, but, you know, science, reading and math is definitely a focus. And what I think we do really well in trust is we focus on all of our subjects. And we do a really good job of teaching science. I know that sounds kind of strange to say, but I know that in some districts, just based on colleagues that I've talked to, there must be a lot of time on science instruction. They just don't. It's reading, it's math, it's science kind of just take the back seat. And that's unfortunate in a lot of ways. And so I'm really proud of the fact that our teachers still really put science up there the way that it needs to be. And I think that's just a testament to what is going on in our school. So um, I just put the, the chatter that I hear when I go to these meetings about and then I've heard some people say we just don't really teach science. It's just kind of like, oh, I'm a science teacher, right? <laughs> so I'm just like, oh. So um, I'm proud of our teachers. All right, let's take a look at uh, grade five at ELA. So again, really, really proud of these students and teachers and what we've been able to accomplish so far. Very, very, very low percentage. Okay, we can look at math, please. Follower of their schools, do such a great job. And this one just kind of stands out a little bit too for that novel. And we were going to use there, which is pretty awesome. Of course, it's very low percentages. All right, and we'll move to middle school. Great job in sixth grade ELA. Math. Proud of the sixth grade math kids and teachers. That was a pretty significant increase to remember from the previous slide. So they're working hard. And continue to focus on our students that are here to move them up. And then grade seven DLA.
I think some slides got out of. You get out of order. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there we go. So that's it. And so we're we're very thrilled. Um, and again, you know, we just have um, outstanding teachers and administrators, and they've already been pulling this data apart and working in data meetings and you know looking at specific skills and standards that. Again, and celebrate our the things we're doing really well, which is a lot. But then also, you know, we're about growth and we want to continue to get better in everything we do. And so, looking at those specific standards and things that we can do, uh, you know, to continue to increase score. So, thanks, thanks so much. I'm so proud of your principal. It's here tonight and for your scores uh, and everything, especially on that count, you know, for your analysis. For your work and your coaches and your reading coaches. And these, these are like scores I'm not going to be teaching. It is a good look at the other areas of inquiry and then we can make it all over. So thank you all. Any questions for Dr. Barry? Okay, Mr. Ferris is here for a facility type day. So I'll turn it over to him at this time. Well, let's not confuse the term project. This is a carpet replacement, mm -hmm. but it's a different from what Mr. Walker talked about earlier. It is just a couple of things from here. One's going to be that it's a any houses for baseball and softball is replacing the, the carpet that's currently in there. It's in bad shape. It's been there since original. It's new. It's new change. It's an unfinished project. It's going to be a design to improve. It's a lot better. It's kind of a turner carpet. It's got a patch where it's a little bit better than what they offer. <laughs> the other thing is a couple of bids, a uh, cleaning bid at Painting Elementary and a long, uh, long and ground maintenance bid for the hollow that uh, will open those tomorrow. And if there were some questions already, we'll let them see where they're going to break those tomorrow. All happening. Yeah, we don't want to wait until the next one. Thank you. Any questions, Mr. Ferris? Good. We got ample time for principal reports. Uh, sometimes our work sessions run a little bit long. We don't have time for principal reports, but I would love to hear from the principal, and I want to know you will still punch my spot up there to go first. Oh, great. <laughs> Thank you. I just want to talk a little bit about ACAP data first of all, because we've spent a lot of time over the last few weeks analyzing that. And um, our faculty came together and did a uh, SWOT analysis. And that was Dr. Berry's idea. I'm so glad we listened to you on that. I've not done one since college, an official one. <laughs> And um, we went through as a grade level and content area level, we looked at the overall data and did this small analysis of strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats. And, um, and it, it just prompted some really good discussion about our data and we made a lot of insight from it. But uh, one being our strengths, we discussed how you've got to have um, the social emotional well being, all those things in place first. Or the scores aren't there. The scores are the outcome from a lot of different things. And so um, just proud of some of the things that we're all doing as a district and in our school 
with our three owners, um, be ready, be responsible, be respectful, just to having that structure in place to make sure we're maximizing learning. Um, we talked about that as a strength this year. Um, we also talked about just our resources and our parent support and the board support. And those are strengths that help us um, be successful. And then we talked about uh, some of the weaknesses, just looking at the data and addressing those and turn those into opportunity because we did view them as opportunities and we want to continue to grow. Um, and we came up with some really good ideas um, about things that we can do in those areas where we want to see a little more growth, such as uh, real focused intervention with certain skills. Um, one of the things our teachers came up with that I thought was really good was um, just the, by analyzing the way that they saw the material they covered early in the year were more just strong in those areas as the material covered later in the year. So we're working on some spinal reviews to them that periodically and some integration into our some of our STEM activities. How do we keep putting on those skills in certain areas? So um, they've got some great ideas that they're putting in place. I'm, I'm really proud of them for that. And then real focused intervention, like really pulling together as a team. If, if there are certain skills in different class, certain kids in different classrooms that need a certain set of skills, how can we pull together to provide those to really get a little more focused on what each student needs? And um, some great ideas there. Um, then the teachers analyzed the data for their current students because they wanted to know um, how are they starting out? How many, how many students don't have that sort of one? How close were they to a two? How many sort of two? How close were they to a three? And they identified those and identified very specific things they could do to, to push those students forward. And so um, great ideas on enrichment, on interventions, on just periodic reviews, different things. Um, and I'm seeing those things already coming into play in the classroom. So I'm really proud of that. So um, I'm real happy with just, just the process that we went through and how our teachers are using that for growth and development. And it's benefiting our students. So, um, and I just uh, kudos to our teachers because you don't see scores like that unless they're really teaching the hearts out. And they are. So um, I just wanted to um, reiterate just the great instruction we're seeing in our classrooms already this year, like, like no other. I've just, I've just been blown away. And I'm just inspired by what I'm seeing when I walk in these rooms. The morning meetings that we've all implemented in the district, just to get students prepared for learning, those are, those are making a difference. Because, you know, I thought about this myself. I thought when I go into PD, and if you jump right in, you don't have a chance to kind of talk and breathe and to get yourself set up for successful learning. It doesn't really happen. So we're providing students with that opportunity with that five to 10 minutes every morning. And so um, I think that's going to make a big difference. And then what I've seen at Hain this year, like, like never before, is they're engaging our students in their learning goals before each lesson. But to a degree, I haven't seen where they're unpacking their learning goals. What do they really mean? What is the outcome for this? And the kids are talking about it. So they know what their end goal is. Um, another is just discourse in the classroom, just those uh, exchanges between students and small groups between the teachers and the students, it's powerful, it's rigorous. And then um, we've made an effort to really um, implement interactive notebooks, even with our youngest students, they just look a little different than with our older students. And we think that's making a big difference that just the ability to apply the concepts and write them in keep your notebook, reference it, it, it helps just to um, give them ownership of their learning. So there are great things going on. It is just going to be fabulous year of the summer. Any questions? Thank you, Dr. Martin. Very good question. Some of the students want to share with the parents. That's really just sit home as their setup does. Or the yes. So we just have this, it provides a part of copies for us. Right. So we're actually able to bring the to principal. On Monday, we have testing training, and then typically there's um, perfect dog, whatever the principal's kind of. Okay. 
So they'll get into it. Right. Awesome. Thank you, Dr. Lawson. That was a very good report. Okay, next. Okay. So um, I was walking outside today realizing how hot it is, and we have a sidewalk to help tomorrow. We are excited. This is Book Fair Week at Cahaba, so um, we're having a sidewalk to help food trucks. And when you do that, and our area we attract people in the community that really don't even have students at our school yet and they come and buy things at the book fair which gives more money to the library so if y'all are out tomorrow y'all are welcome to come by and um, last week um, we had a great time at Bindi so it's our first time to have a um, spirit night there we looked out on the weather it's one of the nights where it's kind of cool and uh, had a lot of families join us out there and it was a lot of, a lot of fun so we just finished up three weeks of a program we call Kindergarten Boost, where um, our specialists partnered with our five kindergarten teachers. So with 10 teachers, we were able to split the students into groups of nine or 10 each. Um, the teachers created these groups based upon what they felt like the students needed a boost with. Um, we did everything from um, working with some of our friends on being ready, respectful, and responsible to having some that were um, re learning letter sounds and kept, you know, kind of bridging that gap and scaffolding. And we had groups that were doing some coding, um, so they were ready for that. Um, and for three weeks of doing that for 40 minutes in the morning during their typical intervention time really made a big difference with these students. So we're, we were excited um, to finish that up and, and get back on a regular schedule. But So we finished all our chat nights before Labor Day. We've had all our day of meetings. Uh, we've collected all the AIMSWEB data. We finished with all of that. Um, that information is going to come tomorrow to, to all of our families. Um, intervention is already leading and they're rolling. And uh, we're finishing up planning for new enrichment opportunities for our fourth and fifth graders, which will start um, in November. And we'll have the latest from November, December, January, and February. Um, we are planning a STEM inspired expo day that will be during uh, Red Ribbon Week, and we'll have many members of our community uh, helping us with that. So, it's easy. <laughs> okay. Any questions? Thank you, John. We, we've been on our rolling at the middle school. Um, I'm very proud of our ACAP scores. There's obviously some areas that we need to grow in, and we're working on a plan for how to continue to improve in those areas. But there's a lot to praise as well. Um, I'm really proud of our teachers for the work that they've been in and our students. Um, it's some of those scores are very impressive. So I'm just really proud about that. Um, some of that growth, I can really must step back and reflect. I can attribute that, I think, to our involvement with this Good Plus grant. I think the focus on the instructional piece coming out of COVID was huge. And I think we just dove right in. And um, I'm just really proud of our teachers for embracing that. And I think it's big off for sure. Um, right now, our one thing our teachers are really doing is we just had our first PST meeting and really getting to other students academically. And yeah, this first fun because it's a huge transition. There's a lot of information coming in to our teachers, um, not just the social emotional well-being of our students, but looking at um, academic needs too. So they're really kind of pouring into that, making sure that they're addressing um, the areas where we need to pass some interventions. Um, we were gearing up for our PSAT 8 9 for our 7th graders next week. This is also part of the grants. So these 7th graders will, will take the test um, Tuesday. Then they won't take it again until the spring of their eighth grade year. So um, we're we're getting prepared, um, get ready for them to to take that. Um, I'm, I'm I love a good thing, and the three R's has been huge for us at the middle school. I had a bus incident today where I was able to redirect back. Is that respectful? It wasn't was me, right? So we just bring it into every kind of conversation that we're having with our students. And um it's they're they're getting it. They're they're using that. That wasn't I wasn't ready. I know. Yeah, yeah. 
So it's it's been a great teaching point and really gives us focus on all of our day to day activities. I'm also really proud of our teachers for embracing our morning meetings. That's not something that's um, very natural to second grade teachers. For our sixth grade teachers, it is, but um, our seventh grade teachers and eighth grade teachers, they really embrace it. We've had a lot of positive feedback, even from our students, them saying that's the best part of their day. It's a great way to start their day. So um, we had our first pep rally last week. It's the first one we've had in three years. Um, it was awesome. I, I, it, was, it was just great to see a gym full of students. And they've never been to a pepper rally before. I had a sixth grade student, I was asking my car line, what was it? He was like, well, pepper rally was really fun. And I'm like, it sure was. It sure was a pepper rally. So just really getting that, you know, embracing the spirit and just getting everyone involved. It, it, was, it was really cool to be a part of that. So really proud of our bands and our cheerleaders and our fans and all of our fall athletes. Um, who just, I don't know, it's, it just has this nostalgic feel of being back to school. So um, we, um, we have competitions coming up for the Lion King. This was the show that we had to cancel during the spring of COVID. Ms. Bruno worked so hard to those props and all these costumes, and we're bringing it back. I um, was just thrilled with that. So we're very excited about the competition and going for that. So I'm just I'm just proud of all the good things that are happening in our building. It's been the best start of the school year I've, I've ever had. So, yeah. Any questions? Thank you all for everything. Well, we've had two pepper rallies. <laughs> <laughs> and the only students who have participated in that. Our seniors because they were freshmen. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was, uh, they went great. And I had a great feel I echo what Jennifer said about the secondary mm -hmm. existence and pace and just how it feels. Uh, we're uh, of course in the middle middle of volleyball, cross country, football season, marching band season, competitions coming up. We welcomed a new employee this week, Lucy Smith, our college career counselor. She's coming to us from the counseling department at Mount Brook Junior High. And before then, she was a longtime teacher at Hoover High School in the business academy. So we're excited about the work she's going to do with our kids about, you know, post high school. And uh, that's a lot of work, and we welcome them. Uh, we also are deep in our college pretty grant. Uh, requirements, uh, planning our instructional rounds for colleagues will be visiting colleagues and uh, seeing the pieces of effective instruction, focusing on rigor and relevance. Field trips are back in the swing. We've had a focus group today. HT leadership has gone places. Planning for the uh, Special Olympics, the first week of October, and we host the regional Special Olympics for all the Open Mountain schools. So they're all coming over to the festival, and that will be at the stadium. Um, we have a big testing day, of course, October 11th for pre-ACT. Um, our next big test would be the PSAT on October 25th, and that will be for 9th, 10th, and 11th graders. We're excited to see what that ninth grade group is going to be like since they are coming from the middle school now already exposed to PSAT. So I think that would be really good for us. Um, this past PSA, uh, the past PSAT, we did garner one National Merit Semifinalist and three commended students. I look back at our notes from the results, uh, and we have identified four students who could potentially be National Merit Semifinalists. And of the four, one was, and then the other three were commended. So we're happy for them. Uh, theater fall production show is in uh, full rehearsal. Uh, our fall theater show is a Western murder mystery be around the time of Halloween. Uh, and it is written by a current senior by the name of John Murray. Um, our homecoming will be coming up at the end of October. It's the last football game. And we have three young student teachers wandering the building <laughs> who look like students. But we're glad to have them. 
So that's what's going on. Any questions? Everything's going well up in Helia, and Phyllis has moved up the house, has her leadership team at each room assisted living tonight. So, maybe she could not be here to hear the report because she has my own room. They are visiting assisted living facilities like we're proud of them, and we're proud of her just for reading it. You want to talk about a nine minute break?
And I can imagine what all this chamber of board meeting will work and here's what I'm going to please say and have our prayer. But God, we are just so excited for all the success and amazing things that you're doing in our community. And Lord, we thank you for the families and students and their hard work of work. And God, we lift up these teachers and administrators and, and people who support their lives in it. And we set your blessings upon them. And just good things will come. And God, we just ask that tonight you just wisdom and direction as we leave this uh, school system. We thank this amazing city. And we need blessings you give us. Thank you for your name. Amen. 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 Thank you. I just want to welcome you here tonight. Thank you, everybody, for being here and um, turn it up and talk to me. Um, oh, it's time to talk to you. I'm sorry. That would be me. <laughs> Lord, you know, I'm sorry that you didn't even that off. Uh, it's time to adopt our agenda. Do I have a motion to adopt the agenda for tonight? Second. Second. All in favor? Uh, okay. Motion three. Now it is the like to recognize our city council liaison, Ms. Lisa Bright. Thank you for being here. Oh, always glad to be here. Yeah, it's still in there. You change your times. It's the consequences with me. I don't remember. <laughs> we six are good. Um, now, I want to report a few things going on in the city. We are, in case you haven't noticed, we've moved. We're officially in the your old house, which we loved. I mean, we kind of got the hand me downs of the, the group, but you know, we love it. Everybody's got an office. The council actually had a conference room, which we never had that before. So we are enjoying our new. Our new digs. Um, we are also in budget time, so we should adopt our budget at Tuesday night's council meeting. So the city is in very good shape with uh, tax revenue coming in and lots of shopping. Trustful has been so unusual that through COVID, we really excelled. People stayed in here and shop, and I think they kind of kept that pattern going. So uh, kudos to the, the mayor and our, our finance director on uh, keeping it, keeping Tulsa looking good and in good shape, and the budget looks well for 22 23. Uh, and lastly, Leadership Festival officially kicked off. We had our uh, retreat back two weeks ago and uh, broke off into groups. So it's 30 people uh, throughout the city that apply to be a leadership trussel. Jim and I are, are part of it. I don't think anybody else in the room is. We're actually on the same team. But look for some really great things to come out of that, that um, each group has to come up with a, um, a project that they want to do within the city, find a way to fund it and sustain it. And um, I think it's gonna generate a lot of new leaders to serve in city, city business and um, city board. So, that's all I really have right now, unless you have any questions for me. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. It truly is a multi purpose building now. Oh, I mean, yeah. we can have our children and now to the offices there. So it looks great too. So, yeah. all right, thank you. Okay, for recognitions tonight, it's my pleasure to recognize Kathy Brown and Dr. Steve Ford. And what all we're going to do is get a picture right here in the middle, but Kathy Brown has completed level three of her AASB uh, voicemanship, and she gets a certificate. And Dr. Ward has completed level four of the school board academy, and his plaque gets to be picked up at the convention on December 3rd by our delegate assembly. So uh, I'll call Kathy Brown and Dr. Ward up to the middle for a picture. Congratulate them. <laughs> One, two, three. One, two, three. Look at the other board members, too. Thank you. 
Congratulations. Thank you very much. For the consent agenda, I recommend the board approve consent agenda items A through R as listed. Any motion to the board to approve items A through R as listed under consent agenda? I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda. Second. Okay. All in favor? Opposed? Okay, motion carried. Have the personnel on record in the board approve my recommendation for changes in personnel or contracts, extra services, and health and assessments. And the motion to approve the superintendent, superintendent's recommendations regarding changes in personnel, contracts, extra services, and government. Do I have a motion? I have a motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Uh, Opposed? Okay, motion here. So we have to nominate now um, the delegate assembly members. We need an alternate and a uh, lead delegate. So, um, well, we've done this usually by volunteer. <laughs> Otherwise, we have to nominate. No, so we can make some. <laughs> Great nomination. I don't write to buy myself a question. I think it's the one on the Thursday before the yeah. Okay. Okay. And I'll be the alternate. I'll be the one. Well, I'll drive you there. Okay. We have to vote on this. So, all in favor of Steve being the delegate and Laurel being the alternate, say aye. Okay. We're all in favor. Do we have any Okay, we don't have any delegations that wish to speak, so I need a motion for our government. All in favor, please stand. Thank you.